Welcome to Deep Thought. A friend circle is a subculture. Now, y'all know me. Y'all know I like subcultures. I've been studying them. And I always tell the story of what made me start really studying subcultures. Back in the 90s, I was working at the Department of Justice, Civil Rights Division, Disability Rights Section. And I was introduced to the uh, deaf culture. Like, there's a plenty of people. There's, there's a whole culture of people who are deaf, but they don't see it as a pathological problem. They just see it as a way of being. I mean, they have their own language, American Sign Language, uh, in different ways they interact with each other. And that got me interested in subcultures as a whole. And I said before, if, um, if I ever uh, went back to school, I would get a PhD in sociology with a uh, specializing in studying subcultures, if I go back to school. If I go back to school, I can study it. I can study the same things without going to school. Because with a couple of degrees that I have, I, I, I have uh, training in doing research. So, but I'll see, because, you know, maybe I'll have something to present and people, they, they tend to take stuff seriously when you have uh, letters behind your name. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll just do it, you know, just to do it. I don't know. But whatever the case, I study subcultures, but all subcultures ain't massive subcultures where they have an effect on the economy. Like, they, you've had some subcultures out there, they have an effect. I mean, if they have businesses like skater subculture, I mean, you, get, you have stores, skateboards, of course, clothing, everything. That's a part of that surfer culture out, in, uh, out on the uh, West Coast. Might have some on the East Coast. Well, definitely on the West Coast. You got surfer culture. Um, you know, you got the sexual subcultures and everything. I mean, even um, you look at the uh, uh, alpha, I call it the alphabet because LGBTQA, all that community, that's a culture in itself. So you start looking at all of that, but then you have tiny subcultures. Like a friend group is a subculture, a friend circle, because what it is, think about it, think about it. You have a group of friends. It could be a friend network. Usually you have uh, maybe a person or maybe a couple at the center of it. I th and, and I was thinking about that's really what inspired this, really, the, uh, this particular title. Because I, I know a couple, and they're out in California, and they have a whole lot of people around them. It's like a whole culture in terms of what they do, how they interact with each other, and everything. Like every friend group is like that. It, 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 could be, it could be a touch football team. You know, a bunch of guys getting together or a co-ed team, you know, or some men and women getting together or whatever. You know, bowling leagues, that's a culture. Knitting groups, bridge clubs, those are cultures. <laughs> you know, those are subcultures, like a network of people Yes you, got, yes, you do have the major ones that can affect entire economies, but then you have the tiny ones. It could be just a few people, you know, because they do stuff a certain way, they interact a certain way and everything. Now, of course, the friend circle can grow more and more because, you know, we have so many connections. And indeed, that's probably how a lot of subcultures have grown, maybe, um, you know, several friend circles get together at first and then, you know, they start interacting with even larger people who got the same thing. But, you know, it's powerful in a sense because I'm going to tell you what, one of the things is a subculture because it's a community. Every, we, we, that's one thing, you know, when I get people that talk about, well, they're loners and all of that, a lot of times they're looking for a community. You see it a lot online. When people support certain content creators, that's still a community. Even, even look, I'm going to call this out. Even when people call themselves Sigma, even when people call themselves Sigma, it's like, oh, we're the loners and everything, but a bunch of you are supporting, y'all calling yourself Sigma, but a bunch of y'all supporting this Sigma content creator. That's still a community. <laughs> yeah, still interacting and stuff. Yeah, it might not interact in the real world, 
But y'all interacting online. That's still, you got, oh shoot, you got a ton of online communities. I mean, shoot, to the point where you had major corporations, they figuring out how to tap into it. You got a lot of corporations paying attention to like different hashtag community subcultures on a, on a place like TikTok. They paying attention. They like, oh, you got that. In fact, uh, like they got one culture, Book Talk. And I remember going to my local bookstore and they, was, they actually have a table up. A table up and they'll say uh, books recommended on, tick, on Book Talk. I was like, hmm, that's some money thing. So it's, it's major, and that's why I keep studying it. But, you know, just that smaller one. I was just thinking about that smaller one. Like, say you got somebody, they got a home or something, and they invite people over, they have discussions and stuff like that, or whatever. Maybe they go over there just to hang out, or maybe they discuss some serious stuff, things of that nature. But it's, it's interesting. It's interesting because... You know, they have different ways, you know, like maybe they're all the same spiritual group or something. In fact, I've read where some major mega churches, that's how they started, like it's prayer meetings and everything. Somebody leading a prayer meeting, but they just keep growing and all of a sudden they're a mega church. You know, movements, movements can start that way just with that friend circle. It's a powerful thing because once, shoot, once you get two people together, and then, of course, their friendship network, anybody's friendship network, they're going to be similar. Or else they wouldn't be friends at all. They're going to be similar. They're going to have similar ideas, maybe similar politics, similar religion. Or you might have some cases where they start something new. They end up starting something whole, totally new, you know? And then it's like it's easy for them to expand. It's like, oh, you meet some people at work. It was like, hey, why don't you stop by? Or, you know, could be where you get your hair cut. You know, I know somebody, uh, I ain't gonna call his name, I don't know if he wants his name called, but he got like, he was able to expand his circle just by where he uh, went to get a haircut. Cause his barber is a part of his circle. And then the barber knows some other people. Shoot, and you start meeting people and everything, all of a sudden, you got, shoot, some people might have several circles, really. You know, because that's another thing with, I found with some subcultures. You get some people, they might not be just stuck in one, but might be, have membership in several. You know, several different people, like they just got to switch up what they're doing. Some people are like, uh, I'll use the term polymath, you know? It's like, yeah. They got an interest in maybe a religion, but then they like playing sports. So one group might be more religious, but then another part of the same a circle, the same man or woman might be in a sports circle. You know, gyms are community. Like when they go to certain gyms, that's a community. You know, but it's it's something to think about. It's something to think about. So anyway, y'all know how I do on here. I just throw out stuff for you to think about. So anyway. That's all I have for now. Y'all think on this, okay? And I'll get back with you. Peace and blessings.